Hi, my name is Sheila. Welcome. We are going to be talking about the reality star Jennifer Shaw and her 78 month sentence, but we're going to take a look at the DOJ's press release that breaks all of this down, gives us an overview of everything. And to be honest, I didn't even know who she was. Yeah. But let's go ahead and jump into it. Let me pull that up. I mean, I've been hearing a little about this, but I want to just do this overview first. And then I want to go back and look at some of the other documents that were submitted, the sentencing memos. But I really want to do this overview first so that I can have a better understanding of what was going on. Um, let's see, that's not quite where I want to be. I want to be up here at the top so that we can see each other. Let's see, complaint, DOJ, reality show. Scroll back up to the top. All right, reality show. This is out of the Southern District of New York. Released January 6, 2023 for immediate release. Reality show cast member Jennifer Shaw sentenced to 78 months in prison for running nationwide telemarketing fraud scheme. You know, so it's different if you just do it within your state. But once you, you know, spread out, yeah, at that point, you're looking at, you know, uh, federal crimes and not just state crimes. Okay, Damian Williams, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, announced that Jennifer Shaw was sentenced today by the United States District Judge Sidney H. Stein to 78 months in prison for running a nationwide telemarketing fraud scheme. Shaw previously pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud in connection with telemarketing. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said, with today's sentence, Jennifer Shaw finally faces the consequences of the many years she spent targeting vulnerable elderly victims. These individuals were lured in by false promises of financial security, but in reality, Shaw and her co-conspirators defrauded them out of their savings and left them with nothing to show for it. This conviction and sentence demonstrate once again that we will continue to vigorously protect victims of financial fraud and hold accountable those who engage in fraudulent schemes. You guys, let me just say this for a second. I hear all the time people are still getting schemed, even attorneys. I have gotten um, a few emails and there's one title company and I actually reached out to them to let them know that I was getting emails um, that were made to look like they were coming from them. I don't know if maybe they sent them to me by mistake, but I reached out to them, did not hear a thing. And I'm just sort of like, y'all, something's going on here. So it's not just elderly people. It's attorneys too. I mean, scammers are working overtime on holidays and like second and third side hustles in order to try to separate your money from you. And let me um, turn off my, <laughs> how about if I turn off my phone so we can continue to look at this. All right. Um, it says here, according to the superseding indictment and statements made in court proceedings and filings from at least 2012 until her arrest in March 2021, that's a long time. Shaw was an integral leader of a wide ranging nationwide telemarketing fraud scheme that victimized thousands of innocent people. The scheme principally involved selling those victims so-called business services in connection with the vis with the victims purported online businesses the business opportunity scheme in particular shaw knowingly and intentionally facilitated the sale of leads contact information for potential victims who had been identified as susceptible to the scheme's lies to sales floors that were perpetrating the business opportunity scheme and during the latter portion of her participation in the scheme owned and operated one of the sales floors that was part of the scheme. Many of Shaw's victims were elderly or vulnerable, like people who can least afford to lose money, right? Many of those people suffered significant financial hardship and damage. At Shaw's direction, victims were defrauded over and over again until they had nothing left. Can you imagine? So once they've targeted you, they keep coming back. 
She and her co-conspirators persisted in their conduct until the victim's bank accounts were empty. Their credit cards were at their limits and there was nothing more to take. They essentially acted like vampires. That's not in the press release. That's me talking there. And I have told this to people before. I see this a lot of times in puppy scams. <sighs> and I try to tell people, okay, they're asking for gift cards. They come back and they took, like, there's a whole, they have, it's like they have a script, okay? They have a script that they use and they say, oh, we need you to send gift cards for the purchase, okay? Then they say, oh, well, we need some additional money for insurance. And you're like, okay, you send that. And then they say, oh, well, they've arrived, but apparently there's still some medical, like vet care stuff that needs to be taken care of. We need to get that documentation before they will release them. So then you send that. And what I tell people is you're never going to get the puppy. They do exactly what she was doing here. They act as a vampire and they just suck you until there is nothing left out of your bank account. And it sounds like that is what the Department of Justice is saying was going on here, except for it was with elderly people and people who were the most vulnerable and who could not afford to lose this money. So it says <laughs> they emptied their bank accounts, their credit cards were at the limits and there was nothing more to take. Shaw was not deterred by the Federal Trade Commission's investigations or enforcement actions nor by learning that dozens of her co-conspirators had been arrested by federal law enforcement, pled guilty for their roles in the scheme, and that two were convicted at trial. Shaw was not ignorant of these developments. She took a series of increasingly extravagant steps to conceal her criminal conduct from the authorities. She directed others to lie. She put businesses and bank accounts in the name of others. She required payment in cash. She instructed others to delete text messages and electronic documents. She moved some of her operations overseas and she tried to put computers and other evidence beyond the reach of investigators. These efforts were not short-lived or narrow in scope. She engaged in a years-long comprehensive effort to hide her continued role in the scheme. So she didn't stop. She just kept on and just tried to hide it. In addition to the prison term, Shaw, 49, of Salt Lake City, Utah, was sentenced to five years of supervised release. She was also ordered to forfeit $6.5 million, 30 luxury items, and 78 counterfeit luxury items, and to pay over $6.6 .6 million in restitution. All right, so that sort of sums that up. Now we know um, in this overview what the Justice Department um, was able to do, what she was doing, and that she has now been sentenced to 78 months in prison. So now that you're up to speed, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Like I said, I'm going to do some other videos that go back specifically and look at her um, memo that she submitted to the court asking for leniency. They, they all send a, a sentencing memo saying, hey, here are some of the reasons why. I've already glanced at it. And it's interesting the things that we say when we're asking for leniency after we've done all this other stuff and hurt all of these other people. But we're going to break it down. We're going to go through it. And it's going to be interesting because I've already glanced at it to see some of what she says. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.